There are no radio altimeter controls in the cockpit. Both radio altimeters activate automatically when AC power is applied to the aircraft. After a brief self-test, the radio altimeters are in a standby mode during ground operations. They become active at takeoff and then operate continuously until touchdown. Radio height is always expressed as the number of feet between the bottom of the wheels and the ground. Radio altimeter data is supplied to several different users and is displayed on both PFDs at all times below 2,500 feet AGL. Normally, Radio Altimeter 1, RA1 height, is displayed on the captain's PFD and RA2 on the first officer's PFD. The radio altitude display on the PFD changes in color and size based on height above ground and or proximity to the decision height. This color-coded digital readout is coupled with a white ground indication line and a red ground ribbon on the altimeter scale. The ground indication line and the red ground ribbon correspond to the rising ground level when the aircraft is descending. As the aircraft descends below approximately 500 feet AGL, the red ribbon appears at the bottom of the altimeter scale and begins to move up. The white ground line moves from the bottom of the PFD toward the horizon. At touchdown, the ribbon is in the center of the altitude readout and the white ground line is merged with the horizon, as shown. These are designed to be used as a ground reference during autoland operations. In addition to the visual indications, during approach, there is a synthetic voice for radio height announcement. The GPWS monitors the aircraft flight path and generates visual and audio warnings alerts when the aircraft is in one of the defined hazardous situations. These warnings will be overridden by stall or wind shear warnings. The ground proximity warning system processes the data from RA-1, ADIRS-1, ILS-1, FMGC-1, LGCIU-1. Most GPWS alerts and warnings are generated as a result of changes in radar altimeter heights or the rates of those changes. The system predicts potential hazards from these trends, but it has no forward-looking capability. The GPWS control panel is located on the left side of the overhead panel. GPWS visual warnings are provided on the miscellaneous panels. The system can be tested by pressing either ground proximity warning system glide slope push button switch. This test is normally performed by the maintenance crew. In addition, two loudspeakers located on each lower side of the main panel broadcast GPWS aural warnings, even if they are turned off. If a high rate of descent is detected at low level, GPWS will generate a repeated aural sink rate, sink rate alert. If this rate is or becomes excessive, a repetitive aural warning, whoop, whoop, pull up, whoop, whoop, pull up, will be generated. In both cases, the red GPWS light will illuminate. If rising ground is detected as a potential threat to the safety of the aircraft, GPWS will alert the crew with a repeated terrain, terrain, aural alert. The system will then generate a whoop whoop pull up warning after the terrain alert has been repeated twice. 
In both cases, the red GPWS light will illuminate. If the GPWS system detects a rate of descent during the initial climb after takeoff or during a go-around, it will produce a repeated don't sink command along with the GPWS red lights. If the gear is retracted or the flaps not in the landing configuration and GPWS detects that the aircraft is close to the ground, a too low terrain warning is generated and the red GPWS lights illuminate. If the aircraft continues to descend, another warning, too low gear, is generated. Again, the red GPWS lights illuminate. If the gear is down but the flaps are not in the landing configuration, the warning too low flaps is generated along with the GPWS red lights. As with other aircraft, the gear warning has priority over the flap warning. Below 1,000 feet on approach, a GPWS glide slope aural and visual alert will be generated if the runway is ILS equipped, the ILS is tuned, the ILS signal is valid. The aircraft is significantly below the glide slope. Both amber glide slope lights will illuminate. Glide slope. Glide slope. Glide slope. The RO glide slope warning will become louder if no corrective action is taken or if the aircraft descends even further below the glide slope. Flap 3 is a recognized landing configuration. If the option is used or if required by an ECAM procedure, the crew must select Landing Flap 3 Switch On to ensure that the GPWS does not generate warnings when it detects that the aircraft is not in the normal full flap configuration. The associated green GPWS Flap 3 memo message is displayed on the engine warning display. Following certain failures, a landing may have to be made with an even further reduced flap setting. The crew can select the flap mode push button switch off to inhibit GPWS flap warnings. If the flap mode is off, the green flap mode off message is displayed on the engine warning display. When selected off, the glide slope mode push button switch will inhibit the GPWS glide slope warning. The white off light illuminates when the GPWS is selected off. All warnings are inhibited. If your aircraft is equipped with the enhanced GPWS, EGPWS, a forward looking capability for terrain is added. The basic GPWS functions remain unchanged. EGPWS is based on terrain database and FMGC current position not on radar returns. The purpose of the enhanced GPWS is to avoid a control flight into terrain and to give enough time to the crew to perform an avoidance maneuver. The enhanced GPWS uses a terrain database coupled with an FMGS position to calculate two terrain envelopes ahead of the aircraft. When a conflict is detected between these terrain envelopes and the terrain memorized in the database, an alert is triggered. One terrain envelope corresponds to a caution level, while the second one corresponds to a warning level. Two terrain on navigation display switches are installed on each side of the center instrument panel. For each ND to display terrain, the terrain on ND switch must be on. Be aware that weather radar information is replaced by terrain information even if the radar is switched on. In the lights out position, the enhanced GPWS operation is fully automatic. If the terrain switch is off, the enhanced functions are inhibited, but basic GPWS functions are still operative. If the enhanced functions fail, the fault light will illuminate, but the basic GPWS functions remain operative. 
For the basic GPWS, the system switch controls the basic functions. Should the Terrain on ND function not be selected on when a caution or warning is triggered, the Terrain display will automatically turn on and the on light on the Terrain switch will illuminate. The second enhanced GPWS protective function provides a terrain clearance floor envelope for each runway stored in the database. This function warns against a premature descent below this floor, regardless of aircraft configuration. Caution. The relative height is calculated using the captain's barometric setting. Thus, the system does not protect against barrow setting errors. The position is calculated using FMGC-1. The system does not protect against FMGC-1 position errors. Should nav accuracy become downgraded, the enhanced functions of the enhanced GPWS are automatically deselected. They will remain so until high nav accuracy is restored. The basic GPWS functions remain operative.